Hi everybody, here's a twin boom pusher that my son and I built together. Uh, this is a very common choice for RC airplanes and even for unmanned aerial vehicles uh, in the military uh, because it's got a lot of advantages. Uh, some of the advantages are obvious to you, but I'll just point out to those who that aren't so obvious, which is that you've got this... Uh, propeller here mounted behind the wing, uh, not so far away from the uh, horizontal stabilizer and elevator so that when you give a little burst of power, uh, it, the elevator has immediate effectiveness. Um, the propeller is not up front by the nose in the event of uh, a crash, uh, a botched landing, whatever, the propeller doesn't get and the engine doesn't get all messed up, the engine mounting is protected. <clears throat> Some of this stuff uh, <clears throat> is done in other designs. And uh, <clears throat> the other good thing here is that you've got a nice long thin wing, in this case high aspect ratio wing, uh, to get some pretty good uh, lift efficiency. And I've also made it about 25% thicker than typical for a wing of such aspect ratio. This results in a slower stall speed, which really makes hand launching the airplane really nice. Uh, not at all a, a dramatic event. It just uh, lifts off very easily. Um, <clears throat> it makes uh, landing the airplane really uh, a pleasure. The stall speed is nice and slow. You can land with quite a high nose up attitude. Um, that is partially due to a really hefty uh, section of movable horizontal stabilizer, which is the elevator, of course. It's about two and a half inches. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, some of the other things that uh, you need to do, really, for a uh, zero dihedral wing is y you've got to have some form of uh, winglet to give you some roll stability, uh, otherwise it becomes uh, very difficult. Uh, and of course, the, the uh, trademark dowel for a le uh, drooping leading edge cuff uh, is present here as well to prevent uh, violent tip stalling at very slow speeds. And this is of course applied only for the last uh, third uh, of the outboard of the wing. Um, and uh, you know, we got our typical hatch section and our typical nose section so that it, if it does crash it absorbs the uh, impact uh, in this area over here as opposed to really messing up some of the more important stuff. Um, and this has, uh, like I said, some really nice advantages but it's also got a couple of disadvantages which is almost the case in almost any design. There's always a trade-off. The trade-off here is that you've got, if you've got a significant amount of wind, uh, you really uh, are going to be making very little headway against it. Uh, if you've got a 12 or 15 knot wind, you, you're barely making any headway if you're heading straight into the wind. Um, and if you're trying to get the plane back to you, you can wait a long time. I've tried this and yeah, it, it really uh, does make a difference when you've got such a thick wing and <clears throat> and the plane you know, has a lot of drag due to that thick wing. Um, and you know, even at full throttle, uh, if you've got a really stiff wind, uh, you can have difficulty uh, doing crosswind landing. Sometimes, for whatever reason, it's not possible to land directly into the wind, and you do need to do a crosswind landing. Uh, okay, the next issue I wanted to address is the uh, vertical stabilizers. Uh, these are fixed; they're not movable in the rudder here, uh, but. What I learned from this, uh, playing with this, is that you really don't need to make them that big. Actually, you, you can calculate what they need to be based upon where the CEG is and calculating the area, the area forward of the CEG versus the area behind the CEG and then realizing how much you need um, for these vertical stabilizers. Uh, and it should be slightly more the uh, area behind the CG uh, in order to uh, 
have positive yaw stability, but not too much more, because if it's too much more, it'll tend to uh, really weather vein into the wind uh, in a very dramatic way when you're not necessarily you know, interested in that. Um, but you certainly don't want to make it too small. That is a disaster. Negative yaw stability is just not what you want to do. Uh, we do not have the full length uh, ailerons here uh, because we've got uh, the booms and uh, as a result of that the uh, roll rate of this guy is uh, somewhat slower than a couple of the other planes that I've d done and you've seen on this channel where the uh, ailerons are full length. Um, as a matter of fact I'm thinking of making these inboard sections uh, of the wing where, where these are now currently uh, not movable uh, to make them into flaps just to see how uh, if it makes any significant difference uh, re regarding the landing I, I doubt it's going to make that much of a difference because this plane, plane flies uh, incredibly slow as it is during landing and you can have a really high nose attitude a fairly high nose attitude uh, during the landing and uh, and it lands very slow, so I'm not sure I would gain a whole lot with flaps. Um, as usual, uh, in the hatch section, you've got the uh, extra enforcement here, so that if it does hit violently, the whole fuselage will not f fold up. Um, and uh, in this one, because of the fact that uh, the uh, CG is uh, about uh, 25 or 30 percent after the leading edge of the wing. It's not necessary to have a very long nose for battery mounting. You can just stick the battery in there and stick it onto the Velcro, and and you've got a reasonably easy way to adjust CG. Um, I really love this airplane because it loops uh, really tight because of its really thick wing and its really large uh, horizontal stabilizer and elevator it can loop very tight uh, and it's a lot of fun to do that um, without having to have tons of power and tons of airspeed it's really nice um, and uh, it's got fairly low wing loading as well um, so uh, those are the main points I wanted to give to you, and uh, have fun. Take care.